Hi everybody, welcome back. So this week I decided to try my hand at a 2x4 project. Uh, I've noticed in the, some of the people I've subscribed to, uh, they have a, on, on, on some of their videos they have a 2x4 uh, challenge or uh, project. So this week that's what I'm going to try. So first thing I did was to get a piece of 2x4 and what I want from that piece of 2x4 is, is to have the grain vertical and as close grain as possible. So when I had a few of those pieces fine, uh, found, what I did was to uh, minimize the amount of knots that I had in it. So this one has a bit of it, but I have some big chunks that I'll be able to do the backboard and the, and the soundboard out of it. So I'm cutting a blank for uh, the book matching of the soundboard and uh, backboard and I, I chose uh, the best end of my 2x4 for that. So this is the book match, one of the book match I was able to get and I'll be using this one. Uh, on the other hand, one of them had uh, a little knot in it and another one had a little pocket of sap in it. So those ones I won't be using because of that. But this one here and also this one here are very nice. So I'll be using those ones. So here I'm using the shooting board to uh, prepare the joint for the glue up. I'm going to remove material until I can't see any more light coming through in the middle. Um, so I'm going to be doing both sides like that. This is a little uh, like an easy uh, glue up device. Uh, basically what you do is you raise the center of your uh, glue up and then once you remove the strips after the nails are in, uh, they're gonna fall in towards one another and that creates a natural pressure. Uh, I also have a strip of packing tape underneath so it won't glue onto the, the base of it and then I just have to add weight on. So while this is drying, I used one of the pieces that had a little defect and created half of the shape of the ukulele I'm going to make. Then I'll be using this as a template with the center of the two pieces and that way I'm going to have symmetrical sides. So now I can use that to start to make the jig for the sides. So I'm going to be using those uh, pieces of plywood, leftover plywood to create my uh, jig. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm going to place this template right here and then try to center it. And I want the inside edge to be touching the inside here and then I'm just going to trace the outline. Then I'm going to cut that out and copy that with the router on the other ones. I just cleaned up this on the oscillating spindle, spindle sander and uh, what I realized is that I was supposed to use that to, to uh, match up the other side but my router doesn't really fit in there with the clamps that I'm going to be using. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to uh, fasten those two together and then clean that on the oscillating spindle sander and then unscrew it, use this one for the other side and then put the other two underneath and redo the same thing. So that way I'm going to have four pieces that are the same and my height is going to be high enough. So now that the jig is ready, uh, all I need to do is uh, get the material ready to bend the sides and then uh, put them in there once they're bent and clamped in so they can dry that way. I cut up another piece of that 2x4 and uh, I, I uh, put the proper width to my pieces and now what I'm doing is uh, working on thicknessing them to uh, uh, a thickness that I can actually bend without cracking. Uh, this device here is uh, something that I made myself so basically it's a 200 watt light bulb that's in a 4 inch uh, aluminum pipe and I have a dimmer that can actually adjust the heat so when it gets too hot you just put it back down a bit and then with water and uh, the, that back strip I'm using uh, I'll, I'll get the shape that I need for uh, the sides. So 
So I got the sides in and as you can see I cut them to length for the centerpiece so that they match here. So uh, it was pretty hard to get them back in there after I did that. So I'm going to let those sides dry overnight just so they keep their shape. And then uh, during that time I'll be able to work. Those are my backboard and soundboard. So uh, those uh, are the ones I did the glue up this morning. So uh, I'll be able to start working on those. I'm using a block plane to uh, get rid of all the saw marks to start with and then I'll be working with uh, a thickness gauge to uh, bring my thickness to uh, closer. Uh, once I have my thickness closer I'm just going to use my car scraper as you see right now and uh, clean up all the kind of uh, little uh, broken fibers and then uh, with the sandpaper and uh, uh, wood chips I'm just cleaning up the final piece. Uh, here I'm uh, actually writing or tracing the outline I should say of uh, of the soundboard and backboard and then roughly cutting on the outside of the line to give me some uh, extra material to uh, work with later. Now that uh, the sides have dried up uh, they actually maintain their shape so uh, I was able to remove the clamps and now I'm, I'm just cleaning the inside so basically the fibers when they get wet they, they tend to uh, to uh, raise and so I was sanding the inside and at the same time getting the all the edges ready and the seams ready for uh, the the end block and the neck block and also the kerf that I'll be putting pretty soon. So I used pieces of 2x4 and I glued them in layers. So as you can see here, uh, my thinking behind it is because 2x4 is not actually a piece of hardwood and the neck actually needs quite a bit of strength. Uh, I want to add some strength and by uh, putting layers of glue, which glue is stronger than the wood itself, uh, that should increase my, uh, my strength for the neck quite a bit. Uh, I kept the same green direction as we have on the sides there, so that way with, it can actually expand and contract with the moisture. I'm done shaping uh, the neck block, so as you can see there's a radius here to follow the, the rim, and then uh, you can see also the all the layers that I, I glued together, so that should make a pretty strong fit. Here I'm back on the bandsaw to, um, to cut up some pieces of 2x4 to create my kerf. Uh, so I cut some strips and then I'm uh, getting those strips to uh, roughly the width that I need and then I'm cleaning, uh, cleaning them up basically before I put all my cuts and all those little cuts is cre creating the curve and uh, I'll be able to uh, move those pieces along the edge and that's gonna be my gluing surface for the soundboard and backboard. So usually when I make a guitar, I have a little jig that can create the sound hole. And um, what I realized is when I, I tried to get get it small enough to do the one on this ukulele, I was like not even close to small enough, not even to do like a, a rosette or something like inlay. So uh, I decided to use a, a drill bit, and then I'm sneaking up on my line to uh, create the, the sound hole. So on the other underside of the soundboard where the bridge is going to be, I need I need a piece of hardwood. I can't I can't put just a, a piece of a two by four. So this is a piece of Indian rosewood. Uh, the wood grain is this way, and it's a pretty tight grain piece, and that's what's going to help transfer the vibration from the the bridge onto the plate itself. So I'm going to have this piece here that's not a two by four, and then I'm going to have the bridge on the other side. Uh, that's going to be glued here and then also uh, probably the fretboard. I still have to decide if I'm going to try the 2x4 fretboard or if I'm going to use a, a hardwood for it. 
So I have my backboard uh, clamped down in my go bar press and further you, you'll see a, a, a wider shot where you can see all the wood strips holding all the parts down. Uh, so this uh, center strip has the wood grain that goes from left to right and what that does is stiffens the the actual glue joint of the backboard. Uh, I put some tape on each side of uh, of that uh, center strip so that's gonna take care of uh, most of the squeeze out and then I just have to go back and clean it up once those pieces are removed. So you, you can see here how the go bar press works like those wood strips uh, because they're longer than the opening they create a downward pressure and you can hold pretty much all of your uh, braces or tone bars that way uh, in that uh, device. So I'm shaping the, the brace right now and uh, uh, cleaning them up and I'll be sanding them down as well. So before I put the soundboard or backboard on, I want to uh, put a wedge piece at the, the, the joint at the back where the two side meet. So I, I use the little wedge that I made myself from the 2x4 and I'm cleaning up the opening where I'll be able to do the glue up. And I also use the piece that has a, a little knot in it so I think it's apropos for, uh, for the 2x4 construction because 2x4s do have a lot of uh, knots in them. Uh, here I'm, uh, I've laid out where I need to cut my uh, bracing so I can do the glue up of the soundboard onto the rim. But I also thought it would be a, a nice little touch to use a carpenter pencil to uh, write down the 2x4 uke that's going to appear through the sound hole. So here I'm applying the glue on the top of the curve. Uh, something I, I removed from the editing was to uh, make sure that the curve was not higher than the, the, rim, it, the, than the rim itself. And uh, so basically I, I sanded and cleaned up the edges. And uh, now that the glue's applied, I'm using a reduced clamp to clamp down the, 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 the soundboard on top of the rim. So here I'm doing the glue up for the neck and uh, you can see the wood grain uh, orientation so that's the way you want to have your wood grain when you put a neck together. That's how you're going to have the maximum strength. I'm still unsure if uh, it's going to be strong enough but the UPA doesn't have that much tension in the neck so I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be okay. Uh, here I removed the, the uke from the, the jig and I'm doing the glue up of the backboard so uh, those are spool clamps and they're uh, going to hold the, the back on during the glue up. Hi guys, so I really thought I was going to be able to pull this off and put the full construction of this uh, ukulele in one video. Uh, as it turns out we're at about 14 or 15 minutes right now uh, in length and I'm nowhere near finishing. Like I, I did the whole body, like I can actually see the body is fully built but uh, I'm just I'm just starting the neck and uh, I set up the fretboard to do shoot the whole neck do the neck setup and uh, so that's gonna take uh, there is enough material for another video so what I decided to do is make a second part to this uh, construction uh, so uh, I would like to know if you guys enjoyed this so please let me know by either commenting or liking. Uh, that way I'll, I'll know if uh, that's something that you guys are into or not. And um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel or you're new to the channel, please do so. I'm trying to put like uh, a video every year, uh, every week or every other week. So uh, I would be happy to have you guys around and interacting with uh, the, the subscribers that I'll, have already subscribed. So uh, uh, that's where we are right now and uh, I'll see you in the next uh, video.